so my voice is audible to you yes sir audible yes, yes sir. sir yes sir all right all right so in the last lecture we talked about the uh, you know logical effort and then we also saw how to calculate the delay of any complex logic uh, you know chain of any complex logic gate now let us come on to this uh, topic that is ratio logic so so far we have talked about the uh, cmos circuits which are ratio less that is uh when i when i say ratio less so that means the logic levels are present at the output so they do not do not depend upon the sizes of the devices in the circuit so those are ratio less circuit now apart from ratio less there are ratioed logics and in the ratioed logic obviously the uh, logic levels will depend on the sizes of the devices in the circuit now the idea is to reduce the number of transistors over the complementary cmos uh, you know circuit so since the complementary cmos circuit so that involves 2n number of transistors that is if n is the number of input so then it requires at least 2n transistors okay, for creating a, a logic in a cmos circuit right so which is ratioless so in this ratio logic one can implement uh you know uh, the same logic either using maybe this style which is uh using a resistive load in the pull up network so instead of having a p mosses in the pull up network here we see a resistive load a passive uh you know element that is a resistor in the pull up network so similarly one can think of using a depletion load n mos in the pull up network and also one can think of using a uh, grounded gate pmos in the pull up network so that is called pseudo nmos circuit okay and this one is called depletion load nmos because in the pull up network i have a, a depletion load nmos that is gate of this nmos is tied to either drain or source right now the idea is to obviously reduce the number of devices over complementary cmos so since the complementary cmos uses two n transistors so here in these two designs we see that only n plus 1 transistors are utilized but yes this uh, you know circuit this actually comes at the cost of reduced robustness so circuit will not be more you know robust now noise margin levels will be smaller compared to cmos and also there will be extra power dissipation now in these two circuits because you have now a path between vdd and ground if my pull down network is on so if the pull down network is on you have a direct path between vdd and ground so even there is no switching going on so there is a static power dissipation in these two circuits so this is one of the disadvantage but yes when area is more important speed is speed and power dissipations are not much important then these uh, ratio logic styles can be utilized okay. so in the ratio logic style you have a n n number of n mosses plus load so load could be p mos or maybe it could be even a passive element like a resistor voh so that is equal to vdd here but vol so that is not exactly zero so in this network for example so it depends upon the load resistance obviously and the resistance of the pull down network so the vtc obviously will have a asymmetrical response here so it is not much robust and there is also static power consumption since you have a direct path between vdd and ground now and the low to high propagation delay can again be given by uh, using the same relation for uh, you know calculating the delay of uh, a lump network that is 0.69 rlcl so by this you can calculate the low to high uh, time tplh now when we bring in the active load for example a depletion load and mos can be used or maybe a grounded pmos load can be utilized in a pull up network so this grounded pmos uh, load circuit is called pseudo nmos okay? and this is called depletion load nmos so here the depletion load nmos we mean to say that the threshold voltage of this mosfet is 
less than zero, so this is always on yeah, depletion load. So you want to make it off, then you have to apply some buys. Otherwise, it is always on depletion load. Now for a pseudo NMOS circuit, that is this circuit. So for this circuit, one can find out the the VOL. Okay, since we we already said that VOH is equal to VDD in this circuit, but VOL is not zero. So that VOL affects the noise margin. So noise noise margin of this circuit is also small compared to the CMOS circuit. So this VOL so that can be found by equating the current through the PMOS and NMOS. Okay. So PMOS when the gate is connected to zero or ground, so then it is assumed that PMOS is always in saturation mode. So in this circuit, PMOS is always working in saturation. Okay. So and uh, the pull down network, so that can be assumed to work in uh, the linear region. So if the pull down network is on, then the current through PMOS and NMOS can be equated to find out VOL. So by this relation, VOL can be found. So here you have simply equated the current for this. This is the current for NMOS in active region or linear region. So where we have replaced. Uh, this VDS that is which is appearing at the output, right? So that is output which is appearing here. That is VD. So that is replaced by VOL, right? So and uh, for PMOS we write the current equation in saturation and equate them. So from this relation, by making some other uh, approximations, for example, VTN is assumed to be equal to VTP. It is threshold voltage of NMOS is, uh, you know, suppose equal to the threshold voltage of PMOS, and also assuming that VOL is small relative to VDD minus VT. So from this relation and assuming these two things, VOL can be found. A relationship of VOL can be found. So VOL now depends on it seems to be dependent on WP and WN. Okay. So VOL is dependent on WP by WN ratio. So that means that uh, you know to make VOL as small as possible. So from this relation, VOL is WP by WN. So if you want to make VOL small, then obviously one has to increase the width of WN, that is NMOS, or maybe one can reduce the width of PMOS to make VOL as small as possible, okay? because you want high noise margin. So for high noise margin, VOH is obviously VDD here, no 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 issues, but VOL is not zero. To bring VOL close to zero, one should either reduce the size of PMOS or increase the size of NMOS. So, if you reduce the size of PMOS, then VOL can be brought down to zero, somewhere around zero. But yes, then the TP LH, that is low to high delay, so that will increase because the drive current of this PMOS also reduces if you reduce the size of PMOS. So, that has to be kept in mind. Now, when the pull down network is on, that is this network is on. So there is a path between VDD and ground when pull down network is on because PMOS is always on. So when pull down network is on, there is a path between VDD and ground. So static power dissipation exists in this case. So that static power dissipation can also be uh, calculated. That is when the output node that is F dish is switching from high to low. That is output is when low, that is high to low. So then the static power dissipation can be calculated by using the same relation that is power is given by VI. So VDD multiplied by I uh, in low to high, sorry, high to low, right? So I low and this I low current can be given by writing the current uh, for PMOS in saturation region. So by this relation, one can find out the static power dissipation of this circuit. Now we had seen that uh, when you increase, when you reduce W, that is, uh, when you reduce W, yeah, when you reduce W, so VOL can be brought down to zero, right? So the effect of W, that is PMOS of uh, width of PMOS, has been seen over here in the simulations. It can be seen. So what happens if you increase W by L of PMOS, right? So this is W of somewhere around four microns. And this is 
the lowest one here this one for btc this is for w by l of 0.25 microns okay and this is w by l of uh 4 microns not micron it is uh, size ratio so it is 4 it is 0.25 so that means from here to here w is increasing of pmos so with the increase in w so that obviously means pmos is becoming more strong with increase in uh, width of pmos so obviously when pmos is becoming more strong in this circuit so when pmos is becoming more strong so obviously even if when pull down network is on this node f so that cannot be brought down to full zero complete zero because this is always on pmos is always on so it will always try to charge this node okay and when pull down network is on so we want that output node should be brought down to zero that is high to low right but since pmos is on it is charging this node and pull down is on it is also trying to discharge so if my pmos is stronger than the pull down network then obviously this output node can never be brought down to complete zero volt right so that has been shown here in the simulation that is when the width of my pmos is getting larger that is when pmos is getting stronger so this output zero so that is not exactly zero so vol at this point is not zero in fact the output cannot be brought down to zero if my pmos is stronger yeah? so here the pmos is getting more strong more strong more strong and more strong so vol cannot also be equal to zero and the output node uh, can also not be completely discharged to zero so this is actually one of the problems here so this is why we say that this circuit is ratio because the output logic levels that is low and high now depends upon the sizes of the devices in this circuit okay. so here is a comparison uh, also given so when the size is 0.25 micron so vol is somewhere around 0.03 and when the size is increasing from 0.25 to 4 vol is also increasing right that is the output node that was supposed to be zero it is not zero so that zero level is increasing it is somewhere around 0.7 here at this point it has to be zero but it is 0.7 because of the size of this pmos is being raised up so now because of the increase in size of pmos we also see that the power dissipation static power dissipation so that also increases right because static power dissipation depends upon vdd multiplied by the current through pmos right so here we had said that static power dissipation so that depends on vdd multiplied by current through pmos and because pmos is becoming stronger so current drive is also becoming strong here more current now so more power dissipation is obviously expected so power dissipation that is static power dissipation also goes up and tplh so but tplh yeah tplh that goes down yeah because drive uh, current is now more so the load capacitance can be charged more faster so tplh is uh, reducing because of increase in size of uh, w of pmos but tphl so tphl is not mentioned here tphl will degrade because now you have an extra capacitance because of increase in size in uh, size of pmos so you have a extra capacitance present at the load so for discharging that extra capacitance the nmos size is same so tphl will obviously go down when you increase w uh so we saw that there is a static power dissipation in pseudo nmos circuits which can limits its use but then it can find uh, you know its use in circuits which have large fan in okay. so some time back we had uh, seen the the disadvantage of large fan in that is the propagation delay of large fan in was increasing so we set a limit that uh, that you know the fan in of Uh, more than four, so that should not be used because beyond that the propagation delay was increasing quadratically. Okay, so we said that large fan-in gates should be avoided, and also we said that the NOR implementation should also be avoided because NOR implementation requires uh, PMOS devices, stacking of PMOS devices in the pull-up network. So to avoid those scenarios, one can think of using pseudo and NOS for implementing circuits with large fan-in. Okay, so since you, you you need only just one PMOS in the pull-up network, so NOR implementation is also possible now. So it does not have a now stack of uh, 
uh, PMOSs which are already slow. Okay. Similarly, NAND implementation can also be done. So you need only just one PMOS here. So large finding gates can be uh, you know thought of uh, getting implemented using this pseudo NMOS instead of using uh, you know CMOS circuit, complementary CMOS circuits. Okay. But yes, the problem would again be here robustness that is reduced robustness and also increased power dissipation since you have a you know static uh, power dissipation here that is you have a path between vdd and ground since pmos is always on so that problem obviously exists here now to improve that situation that is to remove that static power dissipation which was a problem here in pseudo and mosh one can think of better loads or improved load circuits and this type of circuit is called differential cascode voltage switch logic so here you will find that you have two pull down networks okay and you also have the output and also the complement of the output available so you don't need now an extra inverter to produce the complement of the output so you can get both nand and nand gate in the same circuit okay? so here you know either this pull down network one will be on or this pull down network two will be on at a time Right, so these pull down network one and two both are mutually exclusive. That is when pull down network one is on, pull down network two will be off. So similarly, when pull down network two is on, pull down network one will be on. And similarly, this M1 and M2, so these are also mutually exclusive. They do not, uh, you know, on get on at the same time. So if M1 is on, M2 will be off. If M2 will be on, then M1 will be off. Right. Uh, now because of this, you will find that there is no static power dissipation. That is, you do not have any. Uh, direct path between VDD and ground. Okay. So because of that, static power dissipation can be reduced or minimized. So let us see that by an example. Let us consider uh, the example XOR and complement of XOR gate. So this circuit here, so this implements a XOR and complement of XOR gate. Okay. Now in this circuit, DC VSL, so it is also possible to share the transistors of pull down network and one and two. So both pull down network one and two can share transistors also. So transistor sharing is possible. So now let us try to uh, you know uh, implement this uh, logic. Okay, that is this is X nor and this is X or. Okay. So let us say that we want to test this one. X nor. So let us say that our inputs are uh, A, B, 0, 0, 0, 1, and then 1, 0, and 1, 1. Okay. So one can uh, verify this, that, that is how we, we say that there is no static power dissipation. So let us say when A and B both are 0, right? So let us say this condition, when A, B both are 0. So when A, B both are 0, so that means that only this transistor is on and this transistor on. Right, so this transistor, I mean, these two transistors are on, and the output that which that will appear over here, okay, so that output will be actually equal to zero, right? Because when these two transistors are on, so that this output node will be uh, discharged. That is, whatever capacitance is appearing at this output node, so that will be discharged via this path. Okay, that is high to low transition we are talking about. Okay. So that means when these two transistors are on, this will become zero. So when this becomes zero, so that means this transistor will also get on, PMOS. Okay. So when this PMOS is on, so this point will be at high uh, you know, potential, so which will make this point also at high, so this will be off. Right. So one of these networks are on, you will see. So this is pull down network one and pull down network two. In this case, only pull down network two is on. So pull down network one is not on because none of the transistors are on here and only one of these two transistors are on. And you will also see that there is no you know, path between VDD and ground. Okay. So we say VDD over here, right? So if we say that this transistor is on, so we have a path from here. Okay. So it comes from here to you know this path. So this, these two transistors are since not on, so we don't have a path between VDD and ground. Similarly, if we start from here, we go to this point okay, and then we go to VDD from this transistor. So since this transistor is also not on, so we don't have a path between VDD and ground in such situation. So static power dissipation is eliminated in such circuit. Okay. 
now apart from uh, this differential cascode voltage switch logic one can also think about using the same transistor to pass the primary input okay so for example uh, this transistor over here so here uh, we are using the primary input a that is earlier we used to use this primary input a and b to drive the gates of the nmos so now this primary input can be used to drive the drain or source of this uh, you know nmos so for example if i apply the primary input a over here so the same primary input a can be you know retrieved at this point that is at this point if my this transistor is on right so if this transistor is on this transistor is on so b has to be one so if b is one so this transistor is on so this a can be passed to this point right so this is called pass transistor right so using this pass transistor concept one can think of, of implementing any complex logic function so for example using uh, two pass transistors uh, and gate is implemented over here right so and gate is implemented here so for a and gate i'll write again uh, the sufficient condition inputs 0 0 0 1 10 and 1 1 right so output is 0 0 0 and 1 so output is always one when uh, you know both the inputs are one okay or maybe one can uh, you know verify uh, these two situation that is uh, let us say we want to uh, pass on yeah maybe from here itself and gate can be verified so uh, that's easy so from here and gate can be verified okay so when b is one okay so when b is one so when b is one that is this condition okay and this condition so when b is one then whatever you apply at a that is at this point so that will appear at this point so that is when b is 1 you are applying 0 over here so 0 appears over here so you apply 1 over here so 1 appears at this point right this point similarly when b is 0 so this condition so when b is 0 so these two conditions let us verify so when b is 0 so when b b is zero uh, so uh, you know you apply when b is zero here so this transistor is on okay and you if you apply a zero over here zero comes over here similarly when b is zero over here okay b is zero even if you apply one over here you will still get a zero here so that represents a hand gate functionality so that can be implemented using the pass transistor law now the problem here with the pass transistor logic would be that since this nmos so this nmos passes a weak one or a poor vdd okay so since we understood that this nmos can only pass you know vdd minus vtm so it cannot pass complete vdd okay so that is actually the uh, problem with this uh, uh, you know logic circuit style that is nmos can only pass vdd minus vtn cannot pass full vdd so that could be a problem so how it could be a problem so let us see this uh, example here so let us say that my pass transistor is driving this cmos inverter right so now let us say that i want a high voltage vdd that is full vdd here which i am passing by applying vdd to either drain or source of this nmos so input is let us say 1 in is 1 so this transistor is on so vdd should be appearing here but because as my pmos sorry nmos is not passing good vdd so at x i'll have only vdd minus vtn okay. so that vdd minus vtn will now be applied to my cmos inverter and if this vdd minus vtn voltage lies within the noise margins of my cmos inverter i'll get some good output right so for example in this case here when you simulate this and we assume that this cmos inverter has high noise margin so we see here that uh, uh, you know the output so this is my output here and this is my input that is this one okay. so input is and here is my uh, x that is potential at node x so which is actually equal to vdd minus vtn okay. so this is vdd minus vtn this is not full vdd so that is actually a problem now this becomes a more bigger problem if you try to drive uh, the gate of another mosfet using the source or drain of 
the this MOSFET, right? So, for example, in this case, okay. So, in this case, we are trying to drive the gate of this MOSFET M2, right? So, M2 is being driven by the drain or source of M1, right? So, drain and source of M1, that is this point. So, this is connected to the gate of M2, right? So, here you will see that there is a problem of multiple threshold drop. Okay? So, here there were at this point x, we, we had Vtd minus Vtn. So, we say that there is a threshold drop, okay? Vtn1, let us say, or maybe Vtn. And if the same Vdd minus Vtn is applied to the gate of this uh, MOSFET, so at y, you will find another threshold drop. So, this total voltage which is appearing at y will be equal to Vdd minus uh, 2 times Vtn. Okay? That is Vtn of 2. Vtn 1 and Vtn 2 are same. So, 2 times the threshold drop uh, is being observed here. That is multiple threshold drop problem is uh, being observed here. So, that is a huge problem. So, imagine if more uh, gates are driven by this point y. Right? So, point y is again connected to some other MOSFET using the same style, then there will be further drops, okay, 3 VTN, 4 VTN. And finally, you know, the output, the input, uh, which is appearing at the uh, inverter, so that may be, you know, out of the bounds of the noise margin of this gate. So then finally, the output of this inverter will be lying in within the transient region. So that we don't want. So we should not drive the other gate, the gate of other MOSFET using this kind of connection. So, this kind of connection is uh, not permitted or not allowed or not advisable. So, instead one should connect the pass transistors like this. And that is drain of drain or source of one pass transistor can drive drain of source of drain or source of another pass transistor. But you should not drive the gate of the other uh, this thing, uh, pass transistor. Okay. So, in this case, you will observe that Y, that is uh, potential which is appearing at Y. So, that will be having just one threshold drop, which is uh, because of, uh, you know, uh, X appearing here. X was VDD minus VTN1 here. So, the same VDD minus VTN1 can be achieved here. So, Y here, we do not see a multiple threshold drop here in this case. Now, to overcome that threshold drop problem. So, this is the same previous circuit where we had a CMOS inverter right, and an NMOS. Okay? And we said that at X, you have a threshold drop that is the uh, you know potential at this is VTD minus VTN. Okay? So, to overcome this problem, that is the drop in uh, the potential at the node X, so one can utilize a keeper MOSFET or what we call as level restorer. So, what is it? So, it is simply a PMOS here, so which is connected here, the drain of that PMOS is connected to this point. So, uh, you know, this node can be fully charged to a VDD by this level restorer, right? So, when I want to pass a 1 over here, so let's say I want to pass 1 over here, so instead of having VDD minus VTN, I will see full VDD that will appear here, right? Now, but then there is a problem here that is when you try to pass a zero, right? So, if you try to pass a zero by the same MOSFET to this point X, so if you try to pass a zero, so that zero cannot be passed unless this MOSFET is, that is the level restorer is weak. So, if level restorer is strong, then this transistor MN, so then this level restorer will try to charge this uh, node to VDD. However, this transistor MN is trying to pass zero or ground to this node. Okay? And this one is trying to charge this node to VDD. So, if this is stronger than MN, then this node X can not, never be brought down to zero. Right? So, to make this uh, you know, X node to uh, come at zero, one should use a transistor ratios where the level restorer MOSFET size should be smaller than the size of this transistor MN. That is, level restorer should be weaker than the transistor number MN. Okay. So, how much weaker? So, that much weaker so that, you know, MN should be that much stronger so that the uh, node X, okay, so that the node X can be uh, brought, uh, you know, the potential at the node X 
that should be less than or equal to Vm, that is switching threshold of this transistor, this CMOS inverter. Right. So this node X should be uh, the potential of this node. So that should be less than switching threshold voltage at least. Then only uh, the output can be ensured to be equal to full VDD or full one. Right. So since I want a zero over here, right. So to ensure that the output is high at zero when I apply a zero over here, so output should be one. So that condition can only be achieved if my MN can pass, you know, a potential at X and that potential is less than the switching threshold of this CMOS inverter. Okay. So if that condition is okay, uh, you know, true, then the output of this uh, CMOS inverter that can be brought to equal to VDD. And then this can be applied, VDD can be applied to uh, this uh, level restorer and then this level restorer finally shuts off. Now, one will also see that this level restorer, so this adds an extra capacitance at this point. Okay? So some extra capacitance because of the drain diffusion capacitance of this MOSFET, extra capacitance is added to, uh, you know, this point. So that obviously means that when you have extra capacitance, uh, you know, appearing at uh, this point, so that means this TPLH, okay? so that will be affected. Okay? So you want to charge this node, so then, uh, you know, uh, the time to charge this node will be more. Okay? But yes, discharging times will be small, but charging times of this node will be large. So that is one of the problems. Now, here is a simulation which explains the effect of the size of level restorer on the output voltage okay? on the VTC or one can say. So here, for example, the level restorer uh, size was 1 by 0 0.2, 0 0.25. And now from here to here, the level restorer size is being increased. So obviously when level restorer size is increased, then the output that is VOL that can never be zero. Okay. So level restorer size is increased. So obviously that means the output here. So that can, uh, the output can be zero yeah, level restorer size is increased. So the output can be zero here, but it cannot be brought down to, uh, uh, just a second. This is yeah. It can be zero, okay, but it cannot be uh, a full VDD. A full VDD because zero cannot be passed here completely. Now, solution to this problem that is uh, which is created by this level restorer, or maybe by this pass transistor. That is, uh, we saw that uh, threshold drops were happening at this point. That is X point here. So at this point, we saw that. Uh, the uh, total voltage that was supposed to be VDD, it was not VDD, it was equal to VDD minus VTN of the pass transistors, right? So to overcome this problem, one can think of using multiple threshold voltage transistors, okay? That is pass transistors, which have multiple threshold voltages. And that threshold voltage could be, that is uh, the threshold voltage of pass transistors could be zero. So that is do these two pass transistors, these two can have threshold voltages of zero and the other transistors in the circuit may have, you know, their actual threshold voltages. Yeah. Only pass transistors can have threshold voltages of zero. Okay. So for example, uh, you know, uh, if one wants to pass VDD, that is a one at this node, so that can be done via this path, that is by via this path here from here to here. So one can be passed to this node X. And if I want to pass a zero, then it can be passed via this path okay. to this uh, node X. So zero can be passed. Okay. So for passing a zero, you need to switch this transistor off. And for passing a one via this one, you need to switch off this transistor. But since these two transistors have zero threshold voltages, so it is possible that some sub threshold current will always flow through these two transistors. So that means you will have a direct path between VDD and ground in this situation via this path, right? Via this PMOS, then via this, and then it comes over here and then it goes down via this end MOS, right? So I have a VDD, a path between VDD and ground. So there is a static power dissipation. So this is one of the problems okay, with multiple VT. Uh, you know, designs. Okay. 
now uh, apart from uh, uh, you know using such a styles and uh, you know using multiple vt transistors uh, one can think of uh, you know implementing complementary logics that is logics with uh, both output and the complement of uh, you know the output so that can be implemented by using these pass transistors so for example a and nand circuit can be thought of by using pass transistor uh, logic similarly a or nor circuit is presented over here and similarly a xor and uh, complement of xor so that can also be implemented using uh, you know the pass transistors okay. then apart from pass transistors one can also think of using a uh, transmission gate and one can think of using uh, this transmission gate to build logic circuits or maybe complex logic functions so this transmission gate actually is a combination of both nmos and pmos so we have drains and source of nmos and pmos tied up together so at these two points okay. so these two points the drain and sources of pmos and nmos are tied together so this is called a transmission gate so such kind of arrangement is called transmission gate and the symbol of the transmission gate is represented by you know this symbol so this symbol tells me that it's a transmission gate so now the beauty of this uh, transmission gate is that you can pass both vdd and uh, you know full vdd and full zero okay so which is also being explained over here so if you want to pass on for example uh, vdd to node b that is you want to charge the node b to full vdd initially it was at zero so you apply uh, at the gate of uh, you know c you apply vdd and here you apply zero that is uh, yeah so here you apply this so this node can be charged to full vdd similarly this node can be or a can be passed to b that is this node can be discharged ground now uh, you know this transmission gate so this is also associ associated with uh, you know resistance okay. so that resistance depends upon this output voltage of the transmission gate okay. so for example here again a simulation is being presented here so here you will see when v out increases right so v out is earlier zero here at this point v out is zero and v out is increasing okay. so when v out reaches vdd minus vtn so somewhere here at this point so v out is when vdd minus vtn my nmos switches off okay so when nmos switches off it represents an infinite resistance so the resistance of nmos so this increases when v out increases so, and here at this point nmos switches off when resistance of this nmos becomes infinity okay. and the resistance of pmos so that you know uh, decreases n mos increases p mos decreases when v out increases okay. and the total resistance this now follows the resistance of p mos at this point okay. so p mos is in saturation that means at this stage from here to here okay. but n mos is in cut off state okay. now the resistance of n mos and p mos can be found again by relating the uh, resistance to the uh, voltages and currents at this node that is at the output node okay. so r n can be found by saying r n is equal to uh, v d s by i d s so v d s is here in this case v d d minus v out by i n and n mos is since in saturation so i write the uh, current in saturation for this n mos and then by this relation one can find out the resistance of n mos okay. so that comes out to be equal to somewhat equal to this uh, relation similarly the resistance of pmos can be found by using the same relation that is rp is vdd minus v out by ip and writing uh, the relation for uh, the current uh, in saturation for my pmos i again arrive at this relation and then finally i arrive at this relation so by these two one can find out the resistance of nmos and pmos in a transmission gate now one can think of using these transistor uh, you know transmission gates to implement any logic function so for example a multiplexer is being implemented over here using uh, the transmission gate okay. so in a multiplexer uh, you know uh, two inputs either a and b can be selected based on the selection lines 
so for example if you know selection line s is high let's say then a can be the output the output could be here a and if selection line uh, is zero so then b can be present here at the output and similarly the layout of this transmission gate is also uh, being shown over here i think this part is inverter's layout which is appearing here over here okay. and the rest of the part is the transmission gate uh, layout so in this transmission gate layout you will also notice that nmos and pmos they do not share the same diffusion region in fact all in mosfish so in mosfish and in fact the gate region so gates are also separate here right so gate of this pmos and gate of this nmos similarly gate of this pmos and gate of nmos so all are separate diffusion regions are also separate of all the mosfish now similar to uh, a multiplexer one can also think of using the transmission gate to implement any other logic for example a zor gate can also be implemented using a transmission gate okay. then one can also uh, think of calculating the delay of transmission gate networks so for calculating the delay of transmission gate networks so one has to find out first of all the equivalent resistance of the transmission gate which is equal to the resistance of pmos in parallel with resistance of nmos so that will be the total resistance of the transmission gate and if you have Uh, multiple uh, transmission gates arranged in this uh, fashion so one can find out the resistances and then again one can either apply elmore delay model method to calculate the delay of this chain of transmission gate okay or maybe one can perform spice simulations then one can also think of uh, you know inserting buffers in between uh, chains of transmission gates so now then one can also arrive at the formula for optimum number of buffers that is after how many stages of transmission gate the buffer should appear right similar to what we had done for inverter chain so that can also be done for a transmission gate chain also and if you do that then you will find that the propagation delay can be found by elmore delay model method and that comes out to be equal to uh, you know uh, uh, this relation that can be found by and the delay of the buffer chain that is chain of transmission gate so that can be uh, you know buffered that is buffers can be utilized in between so the optimum number of buffers so that can also be found by this relation and optimum delay can also be found for this transmission gate chain using this relation so uh, similar to this multiplexer and zor gates so one can also think of using transmission gates to implement a full address circuit so for example here sum and carry both can be uh, you know generated by uh, you know utilizing only full adder uh, you know only transmission gates so here sum is generated using transmission gate and this is carry being generated using the transmission gate okay. and here in this circuit you will find that the delays for sum and carry both are same so not just full adder but any other circuit can be implemented using transmission gate so i hope my voice is audible to you yes sir okay yes sir yes sir yeah, yeah so then apart from uh, the pass transistor logics and maybe the transmission gate logic there is another set of logic which is called dynamic logic right so what is dynamic uh, uh, cmos circuit let us first of all talk about once again talk about the static circuit so we saw that in static circuits at every point the output is connected to either ground or vdt okay so this is what we have seen for static cmos circuits okay and we also understand that for static cmos circuits uh, uh you know we require 2n number of transistors for a n input cmos circuit static cmos circuit 2n number of transistors or 2n devices are to be used okay now apart from that we have dynamic circuits which rely on the Uh, you know temporary st temporary storage of signal values on the capacitance okay. and we also uh, you know uh, sometime uh, uh, you know uh, confirm that uh, this dynamic circuits you need some sort of clock or some sort of refreshing uh, circuit which should refresh uh, continuously the output because the output is stored on capacitor and capacitor loses its charge after some time 
Now these dynamic circuits they only require n plus two number of transistors. So if n is the number of input input, so it requires only n plus two number of transistors, where this two uh, will incorporate one n type and one p type. That is n plus one n type and one p type transistors are required to implement these dynamic circuits. So for example, here a dynamic gate is being presented. So in a dynamic gate, you need since n plus two, so it's a n input. Let's say three input. So you need five transistors. Okay, three for the pull down networks, one PMOS and one NMOS. Okay, and both PMOS and NMOS, so that are driven by clock inputs. Okay? So for example, here uh, AB plus C whole bar logic is being implemented here, right? So AB plus uh, C whole bar. So this logic is implemented using a dynamic gate with only n plus two transistors. Okay? So this dynamic gate circuit has uh, two phase of operation, two phase operation cycle. So in the first phase, you have pre-charge when clock is zero. So when clock is zero here, so obviously when clock is zero, this transistor is on. So that means my output node will be charged. So this is called pre-charge. And when clock is one, so this is called evaluate. So when clock is one, that means this NMOS is on and this is PMOS is off. So whatever output, whatever logic is being implemented, so that is evaluated. Okay, that is the output node. So that is discharge, that is capacitance is discharged to zero. So that is the logic being evaluated uh, during this cycle only, that is evaluate cycle only. Okay. In the pre-charge phase, we have only the charging of output node possible. Yeah. Now, uh, in a dynamic gate, uh, there are few uh, conditions. So condition number one is that is once the output of dynamic gate is discharged, it cannot be charged again until the next pre-charge operation. So this is very important. That is once the output node is evaluated here, that is output node is discharged. It cannot be charged again until the another pre-charge uh, phase or pre-charge cycle. Okay. And the other point is that inputs to the gate can make at most one transition during evaluation. Right? So during evaluation through pull down network, inputs to the gate that is input to the pull down network. So they can only make just one transition during the evaluation. Then the third condition is that output can be in a high impedance state during and after evaluation. That is when pull down network is off, uh, you know, the output can be in the high impedance state. So obviously when pull down network is off, okay, pull down network is off, this output can be in high impedance state. That is output is floating. So the dynamic gate, we, we saw that they can be implemented by just using N plus two transistors. Okay. Then the VOL, so that can be equal to ground and VOH that can be equal to VD. That is full swings at the output can be seen for this dynamic gate and it is a non-ratioed circuit that is sizing of the devices do not affect the logic levels and you can also obtain faster switching speeds. Okay. Faster switching speeds comes from the reduced load capacitance due to the lower input capacitance because you do not have a full flesh PMOS network here. So you have just one PMOS circuit in the pull down network, what you have just one PMOS in pull down network, sorry, pull up network. So the load capacitance is reduced. So switching speed is fast. And the reduced load capacitance is due to smaller output loading. So obviously because of smaller number of PMOS. And there is no short circuit current, that is no uh, uh, short circuit current, that is no current from VDD to ground. That is VDD and ground are not shorted. There is no path between VDD and ground. So static power dissipation is also minimized here. So, but yes, you will find that overall power dissipation is usually higher than static CMOS. Though there is no static current path between VDD and ground and there is no glitching also. And yeah, so, but there is a problem that you have an extra load on clock. Okay. 
so since here the same clock which is used in circuit for some other purpose so that is being uh, utilized for driving the gates of this pmos and nmos so that means we have a extra load of two transistor two transistors on clock so clock power dissipation also goes up that means right so clock load increases and clock power dissipation should both increase because of you know extra load on clock uh, you know extra load of two transistors on clock yeah. and the low noise margin is also low because vtc is not symmetrical so these are some of the problems of the dynamic uh, logic gate now one of the problem in the dynamic design is charge leakage so what is charge leakage here so that is uh, you know for example if i want to discharge this output node via these transistors so then uh, because of you know the reverse bias junction here which is appearing here so this reverse bias junction can also uh, conduct so you know the leakage from the reverse bias junction is also possible here so because of this uh, you know uh, there are some problems here and because of this you will also require a minimum clock rate okay. so that is also required here so leakage sources are here reverse bias diode and also sub threshold leakage of nmos pull down so this nmos pull down so that also contributes uh, to conduction because of sub threshold current so which are also possible okay. now charge is stored on cl so this will leak away with time so this will leak away with time so even if you know uh, this clock is not high that is this transistor pull down network transistor this is not on the charge on this capacitor can leak because of uh, you know the reverse bias diode which are conducting here so charge leakage problem exists over here in these circuits now the solution to this charge leakage problem so that could be again one can think of keeping a keeper mosfet over here okay so one can think of using a keeper mosfet so the job of this keeper mosfet will again be to uh, you know charge this node because this charge will lose its value because of the leakages through the reverse bias diode the reverse bias diode can conduct so the charge can leak so to prevent this charge leakage one can think of using a keeper mosfet again similar to uh, a level restorer so one can keep a keeper mosfet over here then the other problem here again uh, i think similar problem we had seen in cmos circuits also so which is called charge sharing so here also charge sharing is possible that is suppose we want to discharge this capacitance via this network pull down network so again for discharging uh, we need to also discharge the uh, you know this capacitance which is appearing because of the drain division capacitance okay similarly this capacitance so all these three capacitances have to be discharged now not just one okay. so charge sharing problem exists here also in this circuit also and charge sharing also depends i mean it can be fixed by input reordering then uh, another solution to the charge redistribution problem uh, could be uh, that is uh, you know one can charge these nodes you know, fully charge these nodes it is these nodes that is suppose if i want to charge the output node that is this node so earlier i if i wanted to charge this output node so i had to charge these capacitances also which are appearing here okay. so tplh was high in this case so to prevent or uh, to make tplh small one can think of keeping another keeper mosfet here and uh, the the drain of that keeper mosfet can be connected to this point here and the job of this will be now to charge this capacitance so that during the low to high transition that is when you are you are trying to charge this output node the output node you know the, the this pmos does not have to charge this uh, you know capacitance also so this is already charged by this keeper mosfet so then tpls can be brought down then there are some more issues in this dynamic gate and one of the issues is because of the same gate to drain capacitance uh, which we had seen in cmos circuit so here also that uh, gate to drain capacitance creates problems which is called back gate coupling here 
So, for example, uh, you know the back gate capacitor that is gate to drain capacitors which are appearing here. So, let us say that my output is one over here. So, at this, when this output makes a transition from one to zero, okay? so when this output makes a transition from one to zero, then out to so this should be kept high. Okay? So, when this is making a transition from one to zero. So then this out two should be high. So this out two should be high, but because this out one, that is the potential which is appearing here. So that potential is lost in charging, you know, these capacitances, right? So these capacitances, they share some portion of out one. Okay? So this out two, uh, you know, this also does not remain one okay? because of this. So that can be seen over here. So this out one, so that has to be, uh, uh, you know, equal to full VDD, but uh, it, you know, loses its effect. It becomes somewhat smaller than uh, VDD. Okay. So this is just one of the problems that is back gate coupling effect. Uh, you know, it exists here also in these gates. Then other issue would be uh, what we call as clock feed through. So since we are applying clock at the PMOSs and NMOSs here, and now this clock can also be fed to the output via the gate to drain capacitance. Okay. So because of this clock feed through, that is clock output is, or the clock is shared at the output. We don't want this, but because of uh, this thing, that is we are feeding clock at the inputs of PMOSs and NMOSs here in the pull-up network and pull-down network. The clock is being fed at the output. So because of this clock feed through problem, you will see the same effect that we had seen in the CMOS circuit that is overshoot and undershoot. So that can be seen in the output. Okay, so because of the clock feed through, that is clock is now fed directly to the output even before these transistors in the circuit can react. So you will see the overshoot and undershoot in the uh, you know, output of the circuit. So that is one of the problems. Then the so other can we end the, yeah, can we end the class now? Yeah, please. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So I think uh, we should end the class here itself now. And we'll talk about the other things in the next class. So if you have any question, then maybe you can ask. Uh, sir, uh, you are talking about the charge sharing and uh, we use a uh, keeper circuit. Okay. Uh, uh, so that the TPHL can be uh, uh, not so long, but the uh, in that case the higher to lower when the N mouse is on, then we yeah, are correct, facing the correct, problem. Correct. That problem exists. So then there is a problem that you cannot bring that uh, this node to zero. So that is a problem. So it becomes a ratio problem here. So since you are trying to make this point, you know, high, that is because of this keeper MOSFET, you are able to raise this to full VDD instead of VDD minus VTN because of threshold drop, this was VDD minus VTN. So you're making it full VDD, but then there is a problem that is you cannot bring this node to zero, down to zero. Okay. So there's a problem. Yeah, this is a problem. So to bring this node down to zero, you will have to keep, you know, these MOSFET that is AB. So they have to be stronger than this MOSFET. So then only this node can be brought down to zero. Yeah, any, any other thing? Uh, sir, you are using uh, diode to show the leakage currents. Uh, actually, I am not getting that point. Uh, from where uh, you show that and actually, please, can you explain that? Yeah, so that diode is actually a parasitic diode. It is not an extra diode. So that parasitic diode actually appears at the drain bulk junction of this MOSFET. Right? So that parasitic diode is not extra diode. So that is appearing at the drain bulk junction of this MOSFET. This okay. is drain bulk junction diode. Yeah. So we try to keep it always reverse biased. And sometimes you will see that reverse biased diode also conduct. So what we call as leakage current. That is current flows through the bulk. Okay. So that is being explained here. It's not an extra diode. Okay, sir. Uh, uh, one more thing, sir, actually. Uh, one more doubt I have. Uh, uh, you are using uh, uh, the single PMOS to implement the XOR function at the uh, at very much of starting of the lecture actually uh, i want to know uh, how you can you show that slide first
in the past transistor this one yes sir okay so, uh, how we realize this uh, uh, xor gate actually can you yeah so you me? just sim simply apply ab yeah, ab is 00011011 and then see what is the output no sir i am just asking as like this we are implementing the cmos circuit then uh, uh, we just see that the a and b both yeah, are this is, uh, not CMOS. this is not complementary cmos uh, there is any method for this one i am actually asking that there is no method you have to you know wisely decide okay sir yeah so there is no method for this Yeah, anything else hello sir yeah, please please so i am just uh, feeling that it's going literally too fast and i could not catch up there are a lot of things going on and it is just too fast for me to catch up can you slow down a little from next lecture yeah actually uh, i thought that there is uh, not much here to understand we have understood more complex things and these things are just based on uh, you know just apply uh, a b as input 00011011 all these conditions you have to apply and see the output so there is not i think nothing much to understand over here uh, i guess so but yes uh, the portions where uh, the speed you know uh, high speed is not required so i'll uh, obviously slow down right but these portions where you know digital logic we have to just see xor nor gates or maybe a few other things like multiplexer and all so these do not require you know much time i think so maybe you can apply uh, inputs and then can verify the outputs okay so these are easy things in fact so but yes this is a tough okay. course uh, course is tough so uh, yes you have to catch up yeah. so i'll try to uh, be uh, slow from the next time uh, but yes uh, uh, you know when such thing comes up where uh, uh, you know uh, you have to just apply inputs and see uh, the you know uh, output of a logic so there you know i'll maintain the same speed okay. so i'll not try to apply you know inputs a b and then show you that it's a zor gate or nor gate yeah so that you can do later on okay yeah yeah, yeah. okay okay yeah anything else if there is anything else then maybe we can discuss otherwise let us end the class uh sir but uh, it is not related to this lecture can i ask uh uh okay let us see just one minute